Then let's go to Mark 1. Because this is what I learned from you. Mark 1. If you will go to Mark 1 with me, verse 14. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. And this is a commandment from Jesus, a commandment. And what was his first commandment? He says, repent you and believe the gospel. That was a commandment from Jesus. You say you're one of Jesus' disciples? You say you love Jesus? We have to do what he says if you love him. And he says, repent you and believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. What is that gospel? Go with me to 1 Corinthians 15. In this Bible, I love the word of God. It never leaves you hanging. If you will ask God, he will show you exactly what he means and exactly the path you're supposed to walk in. And Jesus said, repent you and believe the gospel. And here is the actual definition of the gospel. But there's some other words too I want us to look at. Verse 1, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you. There it is again. It says, which also you have received and wherein you stand. And look at this next phrase, by which... By what? By the gospel. Paul says, by the gospel, by which also you are saved. You are saved. Oh, we talk about saved. You know what? Right here. How are you saved? You're saved by the gospel. You are saved by the gospel. That's what it says. Paul's speaking right here. By which you are saved. The gospel. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless I believed in unless you have believed in vain. You mean you can believe and stop believing and then it's vain? Then it's worthless? Then it's empty? Yes. But look at what this word said. Look at this word saved. By which you are saved. The gospel is where you get saved. Did you know that? Now, what exactly is it that saves you? Verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. There is your definition of the gospel. There is where you're saved. You are saved through the gospel. Now, I want us to look at that word saved. That word saved is sozo. We've been talking about this gospel for the last several weeks. This program goes to shortwave radio. And we've been talking about Mark 1 and 1 Corinthians 15. And this word saved, by which also you are saved. That word is sozo. Do you know what sozo means? Sozo means, it's it's got a lot of meanings. And it's a wonderful word. And it's a word you ought to know. Sozo. That's the Greek word sozo. It means to save. It means to keep safe. To keep safe. It means to be sound. It means to be saved from danger or destruction. It means to be healed. It means to be made well. That's what sozo means. It just doesn't mean born again. It means a whole lot of things. And you know where those whole lot of things come through? They come through the gospel. They come through the gospel. Turn with me to Matthew 1, 21. I'm going to show you something here. We're going to take a look at that word sozo. Matthew 1, 21, talking about the baby Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, verse 20, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, this is Joseph. He's getting ready to take care of Mary, the mother of Jesus. He said, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And now look what he says. He says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And look what the next phrase says. For he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save his people from their sins. You know what that word saved is? Sozo. Sozo. So how are you saved from your sins? You're saved from your sins through the gospel, the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Go with me to Matthew uh, chapter 8. Verse 23, this is Jesus. He says, and when he was entered into his ship, his disciples followed him. They all get in the boat. My God. He says, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves. But Jesus is asleep. 
And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, save us. Save us. We perish. We're all going to die. You know what that word save is? So-so. Amen. So-so. So you mean that you can be saved from a shipwreck with the, with the gospel? Absolutely. Look what Jesus did. Amen. And it says, and when he said unto them, he said, why are you so fearful, O you of little faith? And he arose. And he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So you can be saved from danger through the gospel. That's where your saving from danger comes from, through the gospel, through the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Now, go with me to Mark 26, verse 56. We're going to take a look at another word, the other place where sozo is used. And how are you saved? You are saved through the gospel that Jesus died for you according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again according to the scriptures. That's where you're saved. Now, Mark uh, 6, verse 56. And when, whithersoever, whithersoever, he entered into villages or cities or the country, the people laid their sick in the streets. And besought Jesus that they might touch as if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched Jesus' border were made whole. Were made whole. Were fixed. Were healed. You know what that word whole is? Sozo. Sozo. Do you mean to tell me you can be healed through the gospel? Absolutely. That is part of being saved. So not only are you saved from your sins, not only are you saved from danger, not, but now you're healed. That's saved. That is part of salvation. Salvation is not just being born again. It covers the whole gambit of what you need saved from. Now go with me one more. Go with me to Luke 8, 36. One more thing that save covers, sozo, that the gospel covers, that the gospel will do for you. It will take away your sins. It will heal you. It will save you from danger. That's the word sozo, and that comes through the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. One more thing. I'm going to begin in verse 33, but this is talking about the gathering. This is talking about the gathering, the man that was full of devils, full of devils. And if you count them, there's about 3,000 in this man. And it says 33. And when the devils went out of the man, Jesus commanded them to leave. Jesus showed up, commanded all the devils to leave. It says, and then when the devils went out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. And when they that fed him saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. And then they went out to see what was done. And they came to Jesus. And they found the man with all the devils were departed. And, and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they also, which told it by means Amen. that he was possessed of the devils, was healed. That he was possessed with the devils was healed. You know what that word healed is? Sozo, sozo, that's what the gospel will do for you. It will save your sins. It will heal you. It'll save you from danger, and it'll deliver you from the devil. Is there anything better than that, folks? Did we miss anything we need? Because sozo covers everything, and Jesus covered everything when he went to the cross for you. Uh, Let's go one more verse. We got about a minute. Isaiah 53. I want to go. This is Jesus on the cross. This is where Sozo comes from. This is where Sozo is buried. Praise God. It says, uh, verse 4, or verse 4 of Isaiah 53, surely Jesus has borne our, our griefs, our sicknesses, and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him smitten, smitten, smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. There's your sins. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace. There's your safety. There's your prosperity. There's your uh, destruction. It says, he, he, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. There's your healing. Jesus covers it all when he was on the cross, and he did it for you. 
and Doyle will lead you to be born again so you can begin to walk in the gospel. No other name under heaven. Just one whereby one must be saved. Jesus. You got the faith, you got the, the grace, speak Jesus after me. Jesus, 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 Jesus. 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 